Well, welcome to another episode of our Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast presented by Agrinovus Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, the host of Inside Indiana Business, also the host of this weekly podcast where we have in-depth conversations with the leaders, uh, the innovators, and the entrepreneurs in Indiana's ag bioscience sector. It's the sector where food, agriculture, science, and technology all converge. This week, excited to sit down with Brad Fruth. Brad is the Director of Innovation at Bex Hybrids. Brad, welcome to the uh, podcast. And this is a new uh, the promotion, right? New title for you, Director of Innovation. What does, the, yeah. I think I know, but what does the Director of Innovation do at Bex? Sure, yeah. So this is a newly created position that, that we have at Bex Hybrids. And really, it's try to, trying to bring together everything that we do when it comes to how we interface with startups. So yeah. we have a lot of different uh, sectors and verticals at Bex Hybrids. And it was getting a little complicated. You had to know who was in research and who was in IT. And so this is to help kind of bring that together under one umbrella. So as, as we um, deal with startups, as we evaluate startups and look at disruptive technologies and how we can apply them to our business, that kind of makes it a one, a one-stop shop. And then also we have a lot of people internally that are evaluating new technologies. So um, our group is, is going to be there to help them with that evaluation process. And I think it's also reflective of the fact that, that certainly Bex is in the ag space, the ag bioscience space, but at the heart, you know, Bex really is a technology company, right? Yeah, we have that conversation often. And so at Bex Hybrids, we're quickly becoming a technology company, whether it's technology, uh, information technology that we're providing to farmers. Um, we're also a supply chain company, we're a warehousing company, and we're a manufacturing company. So we're also looking at not only biotechnology and seed traits and genetics, but we're also looking at how can we efficiently handle new product coming out of an of an automated tower. Yeah. Um, how can we distribute our 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 product? Work. We're dealing with an annual product. We only get one order per year per customer. So we take that order and then we have a very short window at which we have to get that out to our to our our customers. So we see innovation happening across our entire landscape, mm-hmm. just not IT and just not on the on 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 the seed side. Brad, talk about your path to where you are. I believe you've been at Bex for about 16 years yeah. now. Uh, give us a little bit of your background. Yeah, so I answered a flyer six, um, about 20 years ago at Purdue to be a marketing intern. And luckily, Scott Beck saw that I am not a marketing intern. So I actually <laughs> interned with them for a couple years in their IT group. Um, started there, they just had three people in their IT group, started doing help desk uh, stuff, and then have kind of worked my way through the organization now. Um, uh, led their network operations group and data center work, um, and now have been asked uh, in in this new role. So uh, it is, I'll tell you what, agriculture is a fantastic vertical to work in. Uh, the, the Beck family, we're very, very blessed to be a part of that organization. And uh, we're a high growth company. Did, did, did you anticipate you would you would be where you are today in this this kind of a role? No. You know, I grew up on a, on a small family farm. Um, never in my wildest dreams would I think that I would end up in, in agriculture. But I I'll tell you, it is is the most rewarding work that Mm -hmm. you can do. Um, Indiana is uniquely positioned for this, too. So it's been a great place um, to have a a great career. It's a great place to raise a to raise a family and uh, super excited to be a part of that. And your role, what Bex is doing and other companies in the space, reflective of the careers in agriculture are so diverse and widespread. Right. For young people, it's not, you know, as they say, cows, plows and only uh-huh. exactly um, although we're good at that but yeah. you know yeah. one of the things that that we really try to do is bridge as ag- bridge agriculture and the tech uh, community so you know those kids that maybe grew up on a family farm had a tie to agriculture but are passionate about finance are passionate about marketing technology data analytics you know we want those kids we have some phenomenal things going on um, we know through a K through 12 perspective through 4h now and through FFA that are really connecting kids and saying, hey, you don't have to be an agronomist, you don't have to be a plant breeder, but we need people that understand, um, as I mentioned, ana- analytics. We need people that know UI and UX. Um, how do you interface with a farmer and how do we build cutting edge, easy to use technology that's gonna bring value to the American farmer? 
As you look at technology, uh, Ed Bex, in the, in the ag bioscience space, you've been at Bex for 16 years now. Mm-hmm. As you look at the technology uh, advancements at Bex, what are some of the, 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 the big things that you have seen, the big changes in technology over the years? Sure. So um, we get this question often, and one of the interesting things is that as we look back, especially on a lot of our growth over the last 15 years, we didn't necessarily do some of these projects with the goal of how to be innovative. When you're in a fast growing company, you're trying to survive (laughs) most days as, as we grow and expand our services and our geography. So, but you know, we've adopted a lot of technologies because it brought value to us and allowed us to scale our business efficiently. So, you know, for example, in the supply and manufacturing change uh, space, there's a lot of talk about industry 4.0. You know, we've been an automated plant floor for a number of years now that gives the flexibility for our automation guys to see every single plant tower that we have in 11 states can troubleshoot that and work on it and gives them visibility into everything. We didn't do that necessarily to be an innovator. We did it because we only have two guys that, <laughs> right. that manage that entire thing. You know, you also look at the plant breeding side. We've made phenomenal uh, uh, jumps in technology, whether it's a uh, embryo rescue lab. We've got a DNA marker lab now. Um, you know, those are major yeah. advancements and now you also have to have an IT infrastructure and an organization that's flexible enough to be able to adapt these new technologies quickly mm-hmm. but a lot of that technology as I said was done because we had to scale a business very mm-hmm. very quickly you know we um, we operate three data centers right now from an IT perspective um, we've got you know I think it's we're up to 12 Bex locations our, our uh, IT group is in 35 locations in the uh, U.S. and wow. we're doing it with a very minimal staff that is scalable and flexible. So when when on the IT side, I've heard them say if it doesn't scale and it can't adapt, we don't want anything to do with it because we don't know what's around that that wow. next corner. So that's the value that we can bring back into the uh, business. Uh, certainly, Brad, the Internet of Things, IoT is, uh, is a hot topic right now and, and certainly will be For some time to come, we're doing this podcast at Launch Fishers. You can look out the window and see the IoT lab uh, here in in Fishers. And on this podcast, we've talked to the likes of uh, Ellie Sims with the B Corp, Zach James, uh, Rabbit Tractors, uh, Scott Massey, uh, Heliponics. Uh, Talk about IoT as you look at it. Those are all entrepreneurs using IoT to power uh, their startups. Uh, Listeners, even though it's out there a lot, don't really know what IoT is. As you look at the Internet of Things and how it can really transform and is transforming farming, food production, distribution. Your views on that? Yeah, so uh, Bex Hybrids is very... um is is proud to be a spark uh, to be a partner and a sponsor of the iot lab here um you know one of the interesting things it seems like right now everybody's slapping a sensor on pretty much everything right. you know i mean you even go into best buy and your refrigerator can make you breakfast it seems like <laughs> but um you know i think what what our power in the market from a bex hybrids perspective and what we've tried to do is um look at that land look at that landscape and then make an evaluation of who our are the players and how can we get the best in breed and then bring that together for a farmer so for example we have a very successful UAV program you know where we went through sat down evaluated a number of UAV companies and us uh, and settled on one and said here is the best and then help farmers with a with a, with with a workflow of how to actually use it so if I want a UAV to be able to to scout only and I want to do it from my tailgate here's the the piece of hardware you need here's the software and we're going to show you how to get from flying to analysis very 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 Mm -hmm. quickly but um at beck cybers we also have our practical farm research program there where we're doing agronomic research and six sites on about two thousand acres and we use that as our kind of our iot test bed so we're testing nitrate sensors we're testing water sensors we we have the ability to uh, provide micronutrients through drip irrigation Um, we kind of use that as our sandbox and our Mm -hmm. testing ground to really help be that front line of farmers. And, um, you know, if you look up uh, soil moisture sensors, you're probably going to find 30 or 40 of them. How does a farmer know which one do I really need? And so at Bex, we use our brand of trust to um, to really find the best of breed and bring those into our ecosystem. Um, we also have a 
a precision ag platform at Bex called Farm Server that is provided for free for our customers. And so we use that platform to really help to bring all these analytics uh, mm -hmm. together. So if you want to look at your tractor data with your weather data, with your drone data, and then you want to run analytics on top of that, we, we can help you do that. You touched on this earlier, but it's such a big issue in the ag bioscience space and other sectors here in Indiana, and that's that's talent, building a talent pipeline for all the innovative and exciting things you're doing that you've been talking about uh, at Bex. How do you attract um, talent, uh, especially in the tech space, uh, to fill the team there at Bex? Yeah, that's a that's the billion dollar question. Um, you know, we are uh, very excited to be part of the tech ecosystem here in Indianapolis, and to be honest, we we have tried to balance our uh, talent coming out of the universities. We have a phenomenal university pipeline here, uh, but that runway can be pretty long. Yeah. So you have to be able to work a year or a year and a half out. And so we basically blend that um, with people that want to make a career change. So we have some great tech partners here, uh, but to be honest, uh, you know, some people spend three to five years in the hustle and bustle. Um, and um, we've had great success in finding those top talent individuals, word of mouth is something that has worked uh, e extremely well for us. And we find that, yes, we're in Atlanta, Indiana, we're 20 minutes north of the Beltway, but if we can get people to drive up there, to come to our facility, we can tell our story, it's not very hard to get them to sign on that dotted line. Mm -hmm. And and so we've had great success looking for those three to five year individuals that are are, are maybe looking to leave the tech mm -hmm. space. Um, you know, people feel really compelled to, to the food and ag story. And I think people want to know that what they're doing is making a difference and so we get a lot of people that that have an act have an ag background we have a lot of people that don't and if we can tell the story we can connect them with farmers and show how they're in the supply chain of food um, then we don't have a very difficult time uh, yeah. doing that so just don't tell our competitors about how <laughs> right. we're uh, doing that yeah um, I also want to ask you qu quickly about uh, rural broadband you know connectivity yes. because obviously we're talking about tech technology you got to be connected <laughs> that issue the state and others are working to improve the situation how do you yeah, view that? so we're very thankful of the next level fund and what Governor Holcomb's doing there. Um our ability to deliver services to the farmer right now solely relies on that connectivity. So uh, while there's been great advancements in cloud computing and IoT and, and edge stuff, um, we still need that internet. What we have found though, to be honest, is we're involved in a number of projects here in, in the uh, state, is that it's all about getting the right people around the the table. So while investment is important, what we have found, we've actually worked on a large project in Northern Hamilton County and Southern Tipton County, that it all it was was about bringing the right people together and saying, hey, Bex, we have vertical assets. The counties say, hey, we'll open up uh, right of ways. And most of the time, it's not, to be honest, it's not about money. It's about bringing the right people together. And every area of Indiana is a little different, but that is really the next, you know, everybody likes to Point to rural electrification and mm -hmm. what happened there, but our ability to deliver goods and services uh, is going to be dependent on rural broadband. So while we really like the advancements that are going on in the wireless uh, industry, we really see it's going to be wireless, it's going to be fiber, it's mm -hmm. going to be everybody working together to solve this issue. Brad Fruth is the Director of Innovation at Bex Hybrids. Uh, Brad, thanks for some really some fascinating uh, perspective on the ag bioscience space and some of the exciting things that Bex uh, continues to do uh, there from Atlanta, Indiana. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Gary. All right. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast. This is a weekly production partnership between Agrinovis Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. Registration uh, also is open for Agrinovis Indiana's fourth annual Ag Bioscience Startup Showcase. It's April 30 at the Biltwell in Indianapolis. Attending is free, and you can register at bit.ly backslash ag bio showcase. 20. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gary Dick. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a product of Inside Indiana Business. Hosted by Gary Dick. Produced by Bridget O'Reilly, Libby Fritz, and Joe Ullery. More people get Indiana Business news from Inside Indiana Business than any other source.